And Karapet Karapetian moved here from Armenia to Holland at the age of 16. He turned pro in 2002, and he follows a great line of expatriate Armenian fighters like Georgia Petrosian, Gegard Mousasi, and Carl Parisian. And of course, Frank, he speaks five languages, Armenian, Dutch, English, Russian, and German, and that'll really help him. Well, that'll really come in handy if he wins. He could really talk some smack then. You know, this kid's got good hands, great head movement. He's a pro boxer. He went 2-0 in 2012. Really likes to let those hands go. But what you're going to see from him is a precision striker. He's not a brawler. He wants to bring you into a game of kick, punch, and knee and try to dismantle you and land one of those big flying knees or one of those massive shots to the head. And he's very relaxed when he fights, uh, which helps his stamina. Great defense, good ring movement. He hits very hard and very cleanly. And he's got a super fast karate style left front kick, left roundhouse kick, and uses it well with his left jab. Yeah, and let's not forget, he's 31 years old today. It's his birthday. And the one thing he doesn't want to do, he can't afford to slip down the rankings if he wants to keep seated high in the tournament. Good point, champ. 2012 was a busy year for Carpaccian. And now here's his opponent who began learning martial arts at the age of six in his hometown of Torino, Italia. A highly decorated veteran of the sport, please welcome Roberto Paolo. Roberto the Hammer Coco, a veteran of 140 fights. Now that's a lot of experience, not to mention he's had 20 boxing matches. And Coco explained to us that there's a quote out there where he said, my idol is me. Well, he got that when he beat his own hero, Ryan Simpson. And Ryan told Coco that he, since he defeated him, that now he was his own idol. Uh, that's a pretty big compliment right there. This is a kid who started in judo at six years old. He won the Italian National Championship at 15 years old and has really become quite the athlete. Like you said, Stephen, a professional boxer. He's got rocks in both hands, but watch him also to kick high and go for the head, mixing the hands high. And he started kicks. judo at the age of six years old and then became the Italian judo champion at 15. Carpetian is four years the younger. Hey, it's his birthday. He's gonna need a birthday wish to come true because he got, I gotta overcome the massive advantage experience of nearly a hundred more fights that Coco enjoys. Introducing first, standing on my right and fighting out of the blue corner. This man fought for the WBC Muay Thai interim title just one year ago. His record, 40 wins, eight losses, two draws. He stands 1.85 meters, and he weighed in at my time at 77.1 kilos. Representing Armenia, he is the number six ranked welterweight in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Karapet Karapetian. His opponent fighting from the right corner, a three-time ISKA world champion with a very good professional record of 100 wins, 41 losses, four draws, 41 of those wins coming by Naka. He stands 1.81 meters and weighted at 76.9 kilograms. Representing Italia, ladies and gentlemen, Roberto the Hammer. Is that ready? Is that ready? Is that ready? 
Round and one. here we go, round number one. Karapetian in the blue gloves and Coco in the red. Karapetian with two left front kicks. He's holding him right with that range. There's that side kick by Karapetian. Coco's got a nice clean guard with those hand positions. Coco comes out swinging, trying to find gold with that left hook. Arpeggio switches stance, pays for it. Good right hand to the body by Coco. It was a slip off of a kick. Arpeggian switching stances again, looking for that way inside. Leading with that front kick, which is really nice on holding that range. Carpeccian using his length right now with that straight jab. Uh, even when he switches, the straight punches have served him well at a distance, but Coco is finding a way on the inside. Yeah, Coco's working his way in behind that jab and that hook to the body. I like what Coco's doing, always finishing with a kick. And look at those head, that head movement. That comes from pro boxing experience by Coco. Pretty brisk first round here. Good right hand by Potapetian. Potapetian's making some noise out there. I mean, he's bringing some power. Potapetian pressing the action. Coco up against the ropes. And he fires back with a nice right uppercut. That's set, Carpaccio back just a little bit. Kind of reset the mode. Nice straight right, left hook combination by Coco. Coco's very conservative with his punches, but when he lands them, they're real solid. Carpaccio's trying to get in there with the punches, holding the rope, and that is a no-no. Coco comes hey, flying in with that knee, and 30 seconds left, and they're rumbling here in the first round. Coco landed a very solid leg kick right there. Oh! Good stair climb jump left knee by Katapetian, and it lands. And he covered it with his hand, so it was nice and clean. What a great first round for these guys. Both of them came after each other. End of round one. Connor Pett, he's really getting the better, I think, in this round. He, he had longer range. He was marching in with those knees, staying active and constant with his hands. When Coco came, he was getting some shots in, but he was getting kicked and held on the outside. I like what Coco was doing when he got the head movement going, especially that big knee. That could have been a fight changer right there. Second out. Second out, please. Corner second out. Round two. Here we are, round number two. Karapetian in the blue gloves. And once again, Coco in the red. Close first round, Frank. How did you pick it? Well, I think uh, I think Karapetian ran away with it just slightly, just because he was able to hold the range a little bit more, land some of those strikes. It looked like he was controlling the action. Coco definitely needs to be on the inside. I mean, uh, the flying knee he landed was pretty good, but it didn't do a lot of damage. But look at these left kicks to the body by Karapetian. Yeah, Coco's got to get back on the inside. Oh. That kick just grazed his head. Man. <laughs> and he's got to be real careful using that boxing head movement if those head kicks are coming. That's right. He dipped the wrong way. He dipped right into a shin. Coco nope. seems to be slowing here. 
And getting beat up in the body with those body kicks and that push kick. Oh, oh beautiful right head kick. It was a rule to slip, though. Two minutes left. I'm not sure that was a slip. That looked like it landed. Carpetchen seems to know that Coco is starting to fade a little bit, starting to really put the pressure. Coco hit him with a big right hand there. Carpetchen didn't even back up. That left kick of Carpetchen is a thing of beauty, the way he sets up his punches with that weapon. He's switching up his feet. Look at him, trying to confuse, trying to cover. Carpetchen really feeling the confidence here. Whoa! Another flying knee there by Carpetchen. It was blocked by Coco. Coco comes raging in with the nice four punch combination. And that's the kind of body work he needs to be doing here. He's going to slow Carpetchen down. It's too fast. That, but that left kick, one, two, three. Arm, arm, liver. no rest for the wicked in this second round, Frank, with 54 seconds left. Coco, nice shoulder roll, boxing movement. Finish with a leg kick. He's got to stay on that. He can't let Carpeccian get his, get his flow going again. Coco coming forward, flying knee, and into the clinch. And we have a break. Like to see Cotter Petchen go back to that push kick, that front kick. Oh, Coco's hearing me. <laughs> Coco's doing a good job of rolling out, but he's taking those body kicks. Those will wear you out. And with 10 seconds left, who will grab this round? They've really gone for it. Another jump knee lands, but it's just a little tap on Coco's chin. Roberto Coco having trouble finding his way on the inside. He's getting trapped out there with nice straight punches. Carpetian following up with big kick. That was a solid kick. Hit him on the glove, but it took him down. There's a beautiful right hand. Carpetian is being first. He's long and his. And here we have the judges almost unanimously rule that for Karapetian. And I think the, a 10-10 score, it was a very close round. It was a close round. Yeah. And here we are in round number three, Coco versus Katapetian. Coco could need at least a knockdown to get back into this fight, otherwise this may slip away from him. Yeah, he's gotta get close and let his hands go. The kicks and the knees have been so effective for Katapetian, but Coco comes back. He hasn't really loaded up yet, Coco. No, he's just boxing, he's holding his ground, he's boxing, but. Those long kicks of Carpetchen just slowly chopping him down. Good inside kick from Coco. That's where he needs to go. Coco has, had, has to be really careful of that right roundhouse kick of Carpetchen. Because Coco is definitely dropping that left hand now. Carpetchen, they're both tired because. Frank, there was no feeling out process. They no. went right after each other right in round number one, and it hasn't stopped yet with two minutes left. This is what Coco needs to do here. He needs to come on strong through the center, hook around the outside, and chop that leg. And he's leading with that right and squaring himself up at the end of those punches. Look at this. One, two, three, four by Katapetian with it. He loves that jump knee. I love it. Now Coco's Car got him in the corner. Yeah, Karapetian pushes his way out. Very few uh, clinches in this fight thus far, and that was one of the rare ones. Coco leading with his right hand. And his right knee, apparently. Dangerous lead with your right hand like that. Easy to be counterpunched, unless you're going to follow with a big kick or something.
Kind of pitching, chopping with a left body kick. Coco firing back with a couple punches. Some of those were shielded by Karapetian. Coco getting his hands out. There was a, a huge uppercut right there. Yeah, you know, like you said, he's boxing. He's not loading up, though. Yep. And he, he really needs to drop Karapetian to really make a statement here. Otherwise, this may slip away from him. With just 30 seconds left, who will take this? Karapetian moving forward with his length. Coco trying to set traps with hooks. Coco getting pushed around, now in the corner. Coco firing back though. Karapetian pretty much blocking a lot of those, but nonetheless, you take impact when you got your gloves up and you get hit. End of round number three. Uh, Frank, that was a really close round, but it seemed like Carl Petchin landed the more effective, uh... I really think he did, and Coco came on in the beginning of the round, but he, he wilted as the round went on, and Carl Petchin again was able to land big body kicks, um, you know, and hold him at bay with, with, with quick, stiff punches, and that's what I thought Coco would be doing in this fight, was, you know, sticking on the outside, stiff punches to the body, but uh, he fell right into the game of Carl Petchin. One thing I liked is that both gentlemen threw the flying knee quite a bit in this fight. That's a dangerous move. And we have a decision. Layup. No big surprise to us, is it, Frank? Nah, the birthday boy got his wish. You know, he went in, he fought a hard fight, he really went after it, he deserved the victory. Coco did some good work, but was always second, not first. We look very much forward to seeing Karapet Karapetchin once again in glory. Nice work tonight. Karapetian, I really like that left front kick, left roundhouse kick, left side kick that he was throwing, along with those straight punches. And the constant body kicks did the job. You know, Coco came forward, but Karapetian shielded a lot. And so he, he rolled and he took the impact, but he blocked a lot of those. And that, that was a great flying knee, but it didn't have the zip on it that, that a knockout, you know, would occur. And coming up next in the light heavyweight